The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Thanks so much, my producer. How'd that happen? Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. We kick things off. We get the market up about two points in the S&Ps right now, trading at 5,020. We have the NASDAQ 100 up two points right now. You got the Dow up by 47 points, and you have the Russell, particularly volatile recently. Check out the Russell up eight tenths percent. What is interesting here, the Russell not quite getting back that slide that we had from Wednesday morning, and you back things up to where we are in the S&Ps, and you talk about getting it all back, man. You talk about volatility, folks. In the last 48 hours, we've had the S&P trade down 2% and trade back up 2%. Be careful in markets where you're chopping around 2% over every couple of days on a news cycle that depending on what data you're getting, right? We're talking about hot data, we're talking about soft data. Today, we get some soft data. And how does it compare in terms of where we go? And here's the re headline, retail sales dropped by most in nearly a year after the holidays. Everybody pulled back during the holidays. We had some tough weather going out in there. Are we getting a little bit of variance on the January numbers? We will find out as we go forward. But nonetheless, you take a look at it on this chart, man. You're talking about a dip of eight tenths of a percent. Retail sales broadly declined in January, indicating consumers took a breather after a strong holiday shopping season. I said to myself, Who's out there buying, now I think about it in terms of whether it's, you know, stuff for kids, toys for kids, right? Christmas time, you're buying a lot of toys for your children if you got kids in the house. Who is showing up to Target or any retailer and buying toys in January, man? Retail sales, I mean, much more than toys, of course, but you get the point, right? You make a lot of those purchases, boy, you are exhausted with purchases after the Christmas period. The drop was nearly the biggest in the year. Nine of 13 categories decreased, led by building materials, stores, and auto dealers. Retail sales, they were only looking for two-tenths of a percent. It's down eight-tenths. Sales, excluding autos, they were looking for a rise. You're down six-tenths percent. The control group, they missed by four-tenths percent. They were looking for a rise as well. So retail sales, tough number there. Looks like the market might not be quite as hot as we may have anticipated and you back things up, it's going to be an interesting day to see how the market digests this number. You jump over to the 10-year right now. There's your volatility on that 830 number. And what's remarkable is we've almost given it up as we, uh, just like that, we're trading lower again. We're right back to where we were right now. And you're talking about yields that are sticky to the high side right now. You put this thing on a daily. And yeah, I guess a couple days ago, we were down at a price point of about 109.17. Nonetheless. All right, we check out the dollar index this morning, back to a 15-minute time frame. Pretty remarkable how we're going to give back everything we got from the CPI, right? Is that what's going to happen? Absolutely remarkable if that's the case. The dollar goes from 104 to 105, just like that. We're back to almost 104.30 this morning. And as I talked about in the S&Ps, there was your CPI print. You dive low to 49.36. You come back and touch 5,025. And with that, we're just dipping a little bit lower right now on the S&Ps as well. We jump around to the gold contract. Not quite the same in terms of not getting it all back, right? Gold from 2045 on that CPI print down to about 2005. You've just been shopping around at that price level so far. Gold struggling to find a bid, even though you're up by $10, quite the acceleration to the downside. And I say only up by $10 because, you know, you take a look at what the dollar index has done, right? The dollar was just back to almost where you were on Monday or Tuesday. Meanwhile, Gold contract, Monday or Tuesday, was pushing 2030, 2040, so still off those levels on the gold contract this morning. You jump over to the VIX. 
quite the spike on Tuesday on that CPI acceleration. And just like that, we're back under 15. We're sitting at 1433 this morning so far on the volatility index. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Yeah, where do we kick things off? How about uh, corporate? Well, there's a couple stories, right? You go to the front page of Bloomberg this morning, and we're going to talk about dozens of banks rapidly piled up commercial property loans. And, you know, it's these smaller banks that are really at risk here. And you look at where they are. This is two dozen lenders exceeded regulatory reg regulators guidelines on commercial real estate. Where are they? Look at New York Community Bank, man. There's the regulatory guidance in terms of asset size, in terms of where they are. They're right at around 200 billion. Commercial real estate ratio of total capital, 462%. Okay, that's what to stick out here. This is commercial real estate, and we could spend almost a whole hour on this chart right now, folks. Uh, let me zoom in. It is the commercial real estate loan portfolio, uh, excuse me, ratio of total capital. And imagine, so that's total capital, right? You take in a million dollars in total capital, and then you have 462% of that in commercial real estate. Yeah, you would have 4.6 million out there for commercial real estate, and you have a million in capital. Think about that. How far does commercial real estate have to come down? You take a 25% hit, you have 4.62 million in loans, that's over a million dollar loss, and you only had a million in capital. 462%. Yeah, so these banks are overmatched in a big way in terms of their exposure, and this is the one I want to get to here. This is loans to capital, okay? Ratio, same deal we were just talking about here. Now, we saw that New York Community Bank's at like 462%, but look at how the small banks are all the ones that are really overcapitalized. You get to the big guys, they're gonna be fine. Again, the reason why they're gonna be fine too, part of the reason, is because of regulations. And keep that in mind every time you see these headlines about the banks, et cetera. Now, this issue goes a little bit deeper, okay? We all know there's gonna be some problems in commercial real estate. My home city, my hometown, Boston, faces a billion dollar tax deficit from the faltering office market. You talk about a reverberation, man. That's the tax system that they have, and when you have properties dropping like that, the report calls for the value of the office space to dip by 20 to 30%. What did we just do? We just did a comparison of, you know, a bank like New York Community Bank has 462% loan to capital ratio, and you have many properties drop in by 20 to 30 percent yeah uh this is from tufts the findings are based on a mckinsey estimate that office values are going to drop by 30 percent or more through the end of the decade boston has an over-reliance on commercial property taxes it would make sense when you look at that city look at that beautiful city south street in downtown boston massachusetts uh back in beautiful july in the summer gotta love boston in july man more than a third of the city's tax revenue is linked to commercial property market. How does this change everything? It does change everything, man. By comparison, Chicago, Miami, New York, Washington, 5 to 15%. Boston's at 33% of their revenue. And you have these, you know, giant cities that are between 5 and 15. Now, partly because these metropolises are able to bolster their budgets with local sales and inc income taxes, which Massachusetts largely prohibits at the local level. So, yeah, that's why, I mean, you know, the idea of paying an income tax in a city, even from Massachusetts, that one blew my mind when I first heard it. Stay tuned, folks. We're talking markets. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hinks from Schwab Network Fast Market. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up by about two points right now. All the markets slightly in the green after that weak retail sales number. To talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, don't miss it. 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Uh, if you ever want to learn about options, folks, they walk you through hypothetical trades. They're usually doing three an hour, all of them with defined risk. I've learned a tremendous amount myself over the years. Kevin Hinks, we have another market moving number and the S&Ps. They, they're not moving that much. We're up by one this morning. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, it, it's kind of an interesting batch of economic data because the retail sales number was weak, right? Re retail sales down 0.8, billion. That's down eight-tenths of a percent from last month. By the way, last month, 706.2 billion. So, bigger number. Across the board, retail sales All those numbers weaker than expected. But here's the thing, Tommy. Jobless claims, 212,000. Historically high is, is the path that jobless claims are on right now. How about this? Import-export prices. Import prices month over month up 8 tenths. Export prices month over month up 8 tenths. So higher prices for imports and exports. Philly Fed was higher, uh, stronger than expected. Empire State was stronger than expected. A lot of strong data, including some inflationary data in import-export prices. But, Tommy, you've got a lower U.S. dollar. You've got lower yields. It'd be hard to sell them off uh, with, uh, with, with the way the dollar and yields are going. That said, we're not jumping out of the gates either, Tommy. Uh, it's a great summation, man, and it, it's always so remarkable, Kevin. It feels like that, you know, over the last couple of years, maybe since COVID, but especially since we've been dealing with all this economic data with inflation, trying to get it under control, 
that it's like there's always something for either side of the argument that we're trying to go through as in there's always some maybe some hot data, maybe some cold data. At first, we thought it was going to be transitory because there were certain pockets that existed. And um, and that's what makes things particularly volatile. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. You get 2 percent down in the market almost off that CPI number on the S&Ps. And by the the market hasn't even opened on Thursday morning, we basically have it all back and we're sitting at 5,020. You made the case with the yields. And before I talked to you, I was taking a look at that two year because I thought it was so cool. You were talking about the two year when I talked to you yesterday, kind sure. of bringing it back. You got that gap maybe around November 27th, you dip below this area. And, and that's quite a little bounce, I mean, on the two year. And you mentioned yesterday, the 10 year, I think when I talked to you, it was 4.3, just like that, we're at 4.2. Uh, do you think this changes anything in terms of where we may go or just a pretty critical area and we go forward from here on yields? The question that people trading, investing, following these markets have to ask themselves is how much of the really good data like lower interest rates, like the effect of AI, like the effect of NVIDIA by itself is built into this market? And the scary answer might be all of it, right? There is concentration risk right now in this market that it has to deal with so i think we're you know we're we run an incredibly long way the market looks like it's extremely fragile up here but so yeah, until something breaks the fact that it was able to shake off that inflation data on cpa and rally yesterday was pretty impressive and the fact that we have some stronger data already this morning other than the headline retail sales all things pretty impressive, but what? And boy, these markets are, you know, I think next Wednesday when we get NVIDIA's earnings is going to be pretty incredible for the overall. Yeah, I, I looked at NVIDIA's stock as you were mentioning them. And, and boy, absolutely remarkable how this stock just won't go down no matter what happens on a weekly basis. I'm not sure I've ever seen a stock accelerate like that. I'm sure I have with the run we've had, but from 500 to 750, like nothing's even happening. Boy, some weekly bars to put it lightly. Uh, they're up next week. We got some equities coming up today though. Do you guys have any equities for Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin? Yes, uh, Mike Folio is going to come on the show, do a presentation about Roku. They have earnings today after the bell, I believe. Yes, after the bell. Then we're going to look at the Trade Desk, a really interesting company that, that we're going to look at in the first segment. And then DoorDash is our final segment. We'll look at the delivery. You know, it's interesting what's going on with Lyft, what's going on with Uber, how these have jumped in profitability. It's amazing story on uber yesterday now uber six of the last 12 quarters they've been unprofitable right now the last three have, well it's really good news for them but man already a bit ahead of schedule but i don't know you have to watch them and see how it plays out boy some some Remarkable charts, to put it lightly, man. I was jumping from Uber on a weekly, on a daily. It doesn't matter what you put that equity on. And DoorDash as well. Talking about quite an acceleration, man. I put it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. You go back on a three-year weekly. We started last year off about a 50 bucks. We're pushing 120. Absolutely remarkable. Kevin, I appreciate the time on an action-packed, busy morning as always. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, man. And have a great uh, weekend. And I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great equities. We're still in earnings season. They're coming out. And yeah, how about these companies? How about Uber yesterday, right? Now, you got some some expectations for Dash, as in you've had Lyft come out with great earnings. You've had Uber come out with a buyback, I think was the deal that accelerated them higher yesterday. And, and that shifts. You know, when you go to profitability, man, you start returning that money to shareholders. Boy, it is absolutely remarkable when you put it in that context. And you get a remarkable move, man, from 66 to 79. I mean, absolutely wild. Even if you take the highs of last week, you're still talking about 72 to 79, almost an 8 or 9% acceleration. And in the middle of that, you had a 2% downturn in the markets for Uber. But as Kevin mentioned, you got Dash out with their numbers after the bell, and they got some expectations, man. This is a one-way trip right now from 50 bucks about a year ago in March 
and you back it up even more than that, as you chopped around at lows, kicked off 2023, at basically the lows of 47 bucks, and it's been a one-way trip. You did come into their earnings 90 days ago at a price tag of 70, though. So you're up $50 on a $70 stock over 90 days. That is going to lead to increased expectations, and DoorDash is going to have their work cut out for them. You know, the one thing I will say now, these companies are going to start bringing in a lot more money for advertising, right? Instacart's doing that to the same degree. Let's take a look at cart as we come into the opening bell. Yeah, this is Instacart. Be careful of this one, folks. You got to separate where things are uh, a luxury, right? Which uh, sometimes not going out and picking up the food is a necessity. If you're factoring in it as like a light, um, a time saver, you got kids, especially that's the one I relate to. It's not always a luxury, but sometimes it, it is a luxury. Sometimes you want to sit on your couch, you don't feel like picking it up. And in the age when Numbers are still rising on a CPI basis, okay? Nobody is canceling their Uber rides, all right? That is a built-in necessity of life that is going nowhere. But I have familiarity with Instacart because at one point in time, I was exclusively using them. And then I think about that they lost an account. It was five to $10,000 over the course of the year just getting groceries. Why? Because it was too expensive. Yeah, so I had to go to the grocery store. Be careful of those equities. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We have the markets open. you got the S&P up about two points right where we were coming into the opening bell there. You see the acceleration on 830 on the retail sales. You spike higher to 5032, but just like that, we've given up the gains. You actually have the market lower at this point. NASDAQ 100, we dip lower as well. You're trading, I say lower from where we were to that spike high. Right now, you're still positive by 10 points. All the market's barely in the positive, and you get the Russell up by about 16 points right now. We jump over to some of the equities. How about Apple? So, Apple shares. I'd be careful on Apple shares today, folks. I feel like this thing is very fortunate to be where it's at when you find out that Warren Buffett is selling his stake and he has a $167 billion position in this equity. I mean, imagine that. He's got a $167 billion position in this. This equity has 16 billion shares outstanding. And he owns eight or nine hundred million. Right? Yeah, something like that. Now we pull over the headline. And Apple's underperformed, okay? So this is not a coincidence here. I would imagine that they are making some calculated decisions, even if it's a small diversification, it is still quite, yeah, $167 billion. Uh, that is what it left it with. So it sold 1% of its Apple shares in the final three months. Yeah, these are the 13F filings. So this is super delayed. You end the quarter and then you have 45 days. So this could have started happening October 1st. Think about that, okay? Now, they're going to get a letter in terms of Berkshire, his annual letter in nine days. Yeah, February 24th, it's going to be the first letter that, since his longtime partner Munger died November 28th. But Apple's struggling right now. Yeah, they're trading lower. I, I think this thing, if I had to flip a coin um, and be forced, I mean, I would go lower on Apple today, man. That is a scary proposition when you have... Warren Buffett selling his position, and he's selling it because you're underperforming. Okay, that's the thing to keep in mind here. I mean, look where Apple is compared to any of the other big growth stocks. You take a look at Microsoft, my goodness, talk about getting lapped. Okay, Apple's not even the biggest company in the world anymore. You jump over to Google shares, right? And yeah, they're back to where they were at the end of 2021, but they're well over where they were prior this year. And Google is up from 90 to 143, Versus Apple, yeah, you're still making a run from 130, man. I would guess maybe that Buffett needs a little Microsoft in his portfolio going forward. Maybe a little bit of NVIDIA shares in his portfolio going forward is what I would guess, as there are some new players in the market that might be leaders going forward. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. How about Bitcoin? It's not stopping, man. Bitcoin shares, 53,035, quite the acceleration from the lows of 39,000 and change. You're up another 2% today. Ethereum, got to stop clicking on those prices, up 2.8% today, well above where we were. You put this thing on a longer term chart. We still got highs of 5,000 out there in Ethereum, okay? And you're just approaching where you were back in April of 2022. Different story compared to Bitcoin. All right, you see Bitcoin, you're coming up to this double top of about 60 to 70,000, you're at 53, we're almost at that area. Ethereum's a different case, man. You still got $2,100 to go to that high of 4,900. Now the next thing coming down the line is gonna be potentially an Ethereum ETF. But do you see the same type of pullback once it's approved, right? Buy the rumors, sell the news. Keep your eye out for that one. We jump back to crude. Quite a little pullback from $78 and change yesterday. We hit 75 this morning. We're trading at 76, 75 right now. We take a look at that gold contract. Gold catching a little bit of a bid. We get some action as we kick things off. Gold at 2019. Let's see what's happening in yields right now. So we got some dollar movement potentially. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of higher price, lower yield on the open right now. You get the 10 year pushing 110.14 yet again. We jump over to the dollar index. Ooh, okay, watch out. So what do we got? We got weakness in the dollar. We have higher price and lower yield coming at you. 
We got the 10 year at about 4.2 right now. Let's jump to see where we are in the two year, which is ZT on the futures. Just mammoth moves, man. Yeah, just chopping around. We will see, but that is quite a move in the dollar, man. As you got dollar weakness, you get the NASDAQ rolling over a bit. And watch out for Apple today, folks. Jump over to Microsoft shares slightly in the red. There's a drop for you. Microsoft drops about two or three bucks. Amazon basically flat so far this morning. Ooh, look at these equities, man. Google's off 2.4%. And what are they doing? Because they had a drop last night. Maybe somebody in the den helped me out with what was going on with Google. So they must have had something coming out or somebody out with their numbers last night after the bell. Nonetheless, Google off by 2.3%. That's going to put some weight on the negative side in the NASDAQ because you got the NASDAQ 100, the only index in the red right now. Jump around to some of the other equities. Intel in the positive by 1.1%. NVIDIA shares, they're down by 1%. A little bit of a drop. $10 is nothing for NVIDIA right now, which is remarkable. Yeah. I don't know. You got growth stocks in the red. And that's even as we have yields dipping a bit with the NASDAQ now off 30, the Dow up by 110 as the market's adjusting just a bit. We keep our eye on Apple. Not bad, only down about 90 pennies. And remember, folks, this is super old data, right? And Apple's been underperforming on this run. And we just got data with the last three months of the year. Those three months of the year completed in December, okay, so if he was selling at the end of the year, you've been chopping around at these levels. It might be an area to diversify for Buffett. You don't want to see him selling when half of his $167 billion of his $300 billion portfolio is in Apple. Yeah, Google off by 2.5. We jump over to Netflix shares. They catch a bid up by 1.1%. It's amazing the divergence we have going on in this market with winners and losers right now with volatility everywhere. Disney shares down about a quarter percent right now. Keep our eye on Amazon, off a bit. How's Tesla doing with Elon? Catching a slight bit, up by 2%. We jump over to China stocks. Alibaba, up about half a percent. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up. All right, we jump over to some of the equities. You got John Deere. Trading lower down by 4.2% right now. So they lower their full year net income guidance. In its full year ending in October, they're looking for net income of about 7.5 to 7.7 .7 billion. The market was looking for 7.7 to 8.2. And this is where when you're using forward earnings that you can get smacked in the face because we talked about earnings per share, right? Using trailing earnings versus forward earnings. You get an adjustment like this, it's going to adjust that PE because those forward earnings aren't going to be there. You got John Deere down by 4.5%. Uh, we'll finish this conversation up, take a look at some of the other equities that are moving this morning, take a look at some of the other equities at their numbers after the bell tonight. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures just chopping around. We're up by six points right now in the positive, trading at 5,023. You got the NASDAQ 100 with a little bit of weakness so far this morning, down by 29 points, 17,851. Dow catches a little bit of a bid on the opening bell. We're up by 128 points. And how about the Russell? Up by 1.5%. Even the Russell gets that entire slide back from where you were on Tuesday. And boy, you talk about a slide. In the Russell, what was that? Almost 4%, 35 to 4% down, get it all back within the span of 48 hours. Not exactly indicative of a very healthy market when you have that type of extreme volatility. The VIX sitting at 1425. We keep our eye on yields as this market chops around. We check back into the dollar that was crashing. Yeah, 104.24, weakness in the dollar, probably helping this market out to a degree. We keep our eye on Apple. Apple catches a bid, down by only two tenths percent. You see the volatility spike on that. 13F filing last night down to 181.88. Looks like fears have been calmed, at least for right now, as Apple barely in the negative. Google off by 2.5%, dropping on the open, make it 3% right now for Google shares in the negative. NVIDIA shares off by 1.3%. You jump over to ARM Holdings, up by 1.8%. And Netflix having a day as well, up by 1.2%. Speaking of streamers, reading this article this morning, it will be interesting to see how this landscape changes. Pay TV distributors may be planning their attack against the new sports joint venture, that venture, right, coming between Disney, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Fox, those three entities. And how are they going to compete? TV distributors such as Comcast, Charter, DirecTV, whether they'll be able to offer customers the same skinny sports bundle as the joint venture. Uh, they'd be, yeah, I bet. Um, how do you compete with TV? Man, live sports is one of the biggest things out there. There is a package for everything right now, but live sports was one of the areas that you really needed to be a live TV subscriber of one of those entities. Now, they say here conversations have not been particularly substantial because limited information about what that joint venture is even going to look like is out there. They really haven't defined how this is going to look. What they have said is they're going to compete for sports rights individually. Okay, so this is a partnership, but they are competing for the rights individually to own those rights, and then they're going to team up. So obviously the revenue is going to be shared in some degree that's probably determined by who has rights for what. But I don't know how those companies compete when you're going to be having this whole package put together for sports. And you're going to have a standalone ESPN app as well, right? 
In 2023, Charter began offering a package of cable networks that didn't include sports to lower the cost of cable TV for customers who only wanted news and entertainment. Offering sports to only those people who want to watch sports is good for distributors, but it's harmful to programmers who benefit from the millions of households that pay for sports but don't watch them. Now, what I'll say is, We have Roku's in the house, folks. If you want news and weather, okay, Roku TV Live is completely free. You have a ton of local television options. Uh, I turn on local Boston news sometimes just to check out what's going on. That is not what's going to get people paying for cable television, folks, news and weather. They're going to figure out, and people don't know it yet, but that's an easy one that you can get. Watching Roku Live right now. It's great, Duffy. I agree. It's great. Um, yeah. There's a million things that are, that are available for free on Roku TV, which is why we don't pay for that type of service. So if that's the thing that's keeping people, these companies are in trouble, man. Sports is the last thing keeping you. And, you know, and laziness. And I say that as in all of us um, canceling something, a subscription, changing, right? Change is not always difficult, um, easy. So all of that ties into it. But when it comes to new signups especially, yeah. I, I can't imagine that's going to work. Right, Roku Live. Yeah, you got Roku. I mean, that's you. Folks, if you have cable TV, check out what you can get from Roku Live. And they have similar things on Samsung. Samsung Smart TVs have a similar. They all offer those types of free programmings at this point. So how do you compete with that? I don't know, especially if you lose sports. Look at the Dow accelerating. 38,666 right now. S&P's up by about nine points at 5,027. As this market catches a bid, pretty remarkable off those retail sales numbers that this market catches a bid, man. I guess it makes sense when you look at the prospect for the Fed. We jump back to the 10-year right now, pushing the lows of about 930. Keep your eye on the dollar today as the dollar sitting at 104.27. And you got a weaker dollar, and that's going to put a little bit of a bid into gold. This gold's up about $11 at 2015 right now. All right, we take a look at some of the equities with their numbers. DoorDash, so they have their numbers after the bell. You're trading higher up by 2.2%. It's remarkable, right, in terms of the, the winners and the losers going on, the volatility in this market right now. I believe you have AMAD out with their numbers after the bell. You're trading at 188.55 right now, up by 1.2% as well. Talked about John Deere with their numbers. They miss. They guide down for their earnings off about 4% so far this morning at 369.94 for John Deere, even with a positive market. We keep our eye on Apple. Apple chopping around down about four tenths percent right now. And Google trading lower in pretty dramatic fashion. Look at this one, man. Down by 3.4% now. NVIDIA drops about $10 on the opening bell. Look at Tesla. Look at this. It's either you're up 1% or 2% somewhere or you're down 1% or 2%. And Alibaba catches a bit up by about 8 tenths percent as well. Bitcoin sitting right at 53,000 so far this morning. Check out some of the other equities. Coca-Cola, they're up by about 4 tenths percent right now. Check out some of the airlines. Look at this run. United up by 1.6% right now. Delta up by 1.1%. Cruise ships, Carnival, they catch a bid and then they pop. Norwegian's up by 2.4% right now. Look at these moves, man. It's a particularly volatile market, especially when you jump around to equity to equity. Yeah, it's the Russell's now up 32 points at 2,048. We have the S&P sitting at about 5,027. Okay, we jump around to some of the equities that are moving this morning. We jump over to Cisco. We're down 4% or so. Let's see how they open. Yeah, you catch a little bit of a bid right now. Uh, a yearly decline in revenue during the fiscal second quarter. They issued lighter than expected guidance for the fiscal third quarter, and they are downsizing 5% um, reduction in jobs for Cisco out there. And they're going to cut over 4,000 jobs for Cisco. So it looks like, yeah, they missed the mark, but they're cutting, and maybe that's what's going to save them today is they're down only 2.8%. They were down all the way to 46.90 after they came out with their numbers. Jump over to Coinbase. Speaking of crypto, Coinbase is up by 6.7%. So JP Morgan upgraded the cryptocurrency exchange to neutral 
from underweight. Uh, yeah. Bitcoin regained a trillion dollar market cap. Read some of the stuff over at CNBC over here. I'd be careful in Coinbase, folks. You're up from 70 to 170 in that October run. Pushed in the beginning of the year. And listen, they're going to get a lot of business being the custodian on many occasions for these ETFs, etc. That's going to be a big boom for them. They just went from 70 to 171. You're back pushing the recent highs that you were up on Bitcoin. If you want to get into it, buy some Bitcoin, buy some Ethereum. I'd much rather do that than trust my money with Coinbase if you believe in it. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got Apple trading lower. You're down a buck thirty. You're down by three quarters percent. You're below 183. We put that back on a five minute chart. Pay attention, man. Okay. I wouldn't want to be risk reward wise. Apple's already been underperforming, and now we got news that Buffett's selling. Be careful on Apple shares. Now, they're off by seven tenths percent. Google is getting whacked, man. Off by nine tenths percent. You jump over to NVIDIA shares, off by 1.7 percent right now. As I said, winners and losers, man. Amazon, they're lower by only six tenths percent, though. You look at that. Netflix is higher by 1.4 percent right now. <clears throat> and I wanted to finish on talking a little bit of big picture, okay? Jumping back to the CPI for a second. And I want to look at here was the print that we just got in terms of the CPI, okay? Year over year, 
month over month. This is month over month we're talking about, okay? This is the one month percentage change in the CPI, okay, seasonally adjusted. And what I want to just touch on, so the number comes in hot in January for the headline number at 0.3%. These were supposed to be the good months. We had talked about it somewhat prior, as in you had a nice monthly comp, um, excuse me, yearly comp that you'd be going into, as in decent numbers, especially when you had the yearly number where you were at an increase of 0.5% month over month in January, an increase of 0.4% month over month in last February. But look what happens once we get into March, April, May, June, and July, okay? When we start comping out against these numbers, so when we get the March CPI number, which we'll get in April, okay, when we get the April number, which we'll get in May, we're going to get all of these numbers, okay, and April's a decent number. But you take a look at these five months, March, April, May, June, and July. Month over month, we had quite a slowdown on the CPI. And so if we don't see that type of slowdown, the year-over-year -year numbers are going to accelerate in these middle months. Just putting out that risk, man. And then you have to keep your eye on energy because energy has been helping us. And we're back at 77 bucks. Yes, we're off at 75.50. But, folks, we're off 75.50. We're just pushing the highs here. We'll see how we handle it. We have been chopping around at near 72.50 for a period of about, what, one, two months? Easy. And keep your eye on Apple, man. There you go. It's dropping. Yeah, look at this thing. Dropping like a stone. Apple just gave up two bucks. That's $30 billion in market cap. Folks, thanks for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned for our man, Basil Chapman. He's up next. Have a great day.